My starting point in the futures industry was that I was wandering around Africa um, having been being brought up in, in the UK, was wandering around Africa when I ran out of money and, and fell upon, I was at a barbecue or a braai if you're South African, um, uh, and ran into some guys who were starting a futures exchange and, and they didn't really know what they were doing. So they said, oh, you're British, you must know how this works. Um, in reality, my honest answer should have been, no, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'd watched Trading Places with Eddie Murphy and I was desperate for a job. So, so I said, yeah, 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 I can help you. So I became the, uh, the second employee of a fledgling exchange and, and really grew with that over time. I, I ran this thing called the South African Futures Exchange, although I started as, a, as, a, as, as, the, as I say, the second employee and built it up with, with a team over time. Started off in very simple futures markets, 45 degree straight line risk, went on and developed options products. Um, in our early years, we had things, we had a banking, we had one of our biggest banking groups collapse on the back of a future, on futures market trading. We had several really fascinating rogue traders involved in the market, which was, which was utterly fantastic. We had a clearing member default, which is a very rare thing, those of you from LCH. We had a clearing member default two and a half weeks after we opened the market, which was extraordinary. So we also got attacked, we got belittled, I got taken to court by the incumbent exchange, really had great fun um, starting the market. And it was also during a very, very interesting time in South Africa, in the move from apartheid through to, uh, to free and fair elections. And so we really felt we were contributing something to the economy. We were doing something worthwhile. At the same time we did, we launched agricultural futures later on, started with financials, went into agricultural. And there was an interesting example of me. I was running the financial side at that stage. This strange guy came along and said, agricultural futures, I think there's something in these. And this was at a time when South Africa had um, grain marketing boards. Agricultural produce was bought by the government and sold by the government. The cost of that transaction in, in maize, which is the main commodity in South Africa, was about 100 rands a tonne. Now, 100 rands a tonne, what does that mean? The, the maize price was about 900 rands a tonne. So over 10% of the cost of the product was going to these marketing boards to run it. When we launched the futures market, we were charging 10 cents a ton to do exactly the same job. So the market automatically benefited by, in essence, 10% of the price, 5% either side. So we, were, we felt that we were heroes, the market went mad, and we did really, really well. Early on, I also defended us against an uh, aggressive takeover. So we had quite, quite a lot of fun growing a market. Age 33, became the youngest CEO of an exchange anywhere in the world at the time, built it up to be the 12th largest exchange, which all sounds very, very self-important. And I have to say, I did beginning to start, start getting into it at that age, the thought that I was obviously bulletproof, obviously a bit of a genius, you know, nothing could go, go wrong. What a superstar I was. Um, that, that, that illusion was shattered one evening when, when gunmen burst into my house uh, one evening with my children there and really brought me back down to earth with a, with a huge crunch. The impact on my family life was, 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 was pretty, driven, pretty painful and obvious, but I have to say, on reflection from a career point of view, from a life point of view, I think it was probably one of the greatest blessings that happened in my life. It taught me what is really important, made me really think about what is important. It taught me a lot about the role of luck and bad luck in what we do. Um, uh, and I think that I've probably been smiling almost continuously ever since. And that smile is really, can be really annoying, it's particularly if, I, if you're in a boardroom with me or you know, we're having a row and I'm still smiling, people just want to punch me. But uh, you know, I'm glad, genuinely happy to be alive, certainly genuinely very, very happy to have three children who are still alive. Uh, and, and that was a, a, an important lesson I learned that night. We sold the business to the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and I moved to de-risk de my life. Uh, came here to the UK, which has been which, where I'm from originally. Um, so moved, moved, the, moved the family here. But I also moved to the safety from a very pretty wild work environment, to the safety of the corporate world. That gave me about a 70% temporary reduction in salary, uh, which was pretty awful. 
but it gave me also a 70% permanent reduction in effectiveness, in my view. My innovation, any innovation ability or virtually any innovation ability was crushed by it. I came across people who were there who thought of survival as being the key, key strategy. Um, staying below the parapet, not taking risk, not, not putting yourself out. That was how many of the people around me were surviving. Didn't suit me. Horrible. I was not good at it. So after a few pretty awful corporate jobs, I was very, very fortunate to fall in with a mad group of, of pretty rough entrepreneurs at Climate Exchange. Having just resigned as, resign, eh, as CEO of LCH ClearNet, I walked into Neil Eckert's very scruffy office office in uh, Bishopsgate to find him and his PA walking through the office with a desk between them saying, oh God, I thought you were only arriving tomorrow. Um, so that was sort of the shift from a very formal, very formal work environment into something much more entrepreneurial was, was a pretty hard adjustment. And it did take me about six months to rebuild my confidence and build a team who were, again, a bit like in the South African uh, environment where we felt we were doing something worthwhile for the country, country at the time in terms of developing the financial markets. In this segment, I had a group of people, climate change, passionate climate change people, who really had a, believed that they were going to change the world as a result of this market. It took me some time to get into their way of thinking and it took them some time to start thinking about what they were doing in a much more market-orientated um, fashion. But three years later, we turned the business from being loss making to making pretty substantial profits and we sold it to the Intercontinental Exchange for a, for a rather nice number. Since then, I've had a couple of true, truly awful corporate uh, jobs as well, but it did uh, give me an opportunity to, to do a couple of fun things. Um, I, I managed to spend a bit of time out in agriculture because uh, one of my long nine month periods of gardening leave from the, from the LSE, thank you, Xavier, um, was spent growing vegetables and raising and eating animals in, in, in rural France, which was great fun. And then last year, following a, a, another pretty unsavory period in the markets, I, I'd had enough of, of the financial markets. So last year, I took over a brewery in the Isle of Wight. So that's definitely an upside of being in the industry I am. There's a couple of other upsides from my point of view, industry versus service, uh, is that you know, I'm dealing with a real product. That's really, really nice. Um, if I can't sell it all, I can always drink it. That's, that's really positive. Um, what else can I think? On the negative side, I have to tell you, there's not much money out there in industry. So um, I have to say, you know, when you've been a spoilt child of the financial markets and you've been able to be reasonably successfully fi successful financially, doing it out in industry is a pretty, pretty tough ask. I had imagined that I'd get much greater satisfaction from being involved in industry. But as I say, I think that there are still passionate, there are still opportunities in the financial sector. So what is it that's brought me back? I've actually just been presented with, I think, with what I think is the biggest opportunity in, the, in my life so far in terms of the financial markets. I think that finance is changing. I think that the traditional methods of raising finance are changing. I think that, that uh, some of the exchanges represented in this room and broader, more broadly uh, out on the street have, have intermediated themselves a very, very long way from the core communities that they were here to serve set up to serve service. Um, so I'm in the process of converting an old and uh, admittedly pretty, pretty dreadful uh, exchange platform, which ICAP bought a couple of years ago, into something much, much more dynamic. We're going to be involved in providing facilities which are less intermediate, with less intermediaries. We're going to be really challenging the, the regulation. We're going to be dynamically working with both investors and issuers. We're going to be community building. Do you remember the old days of mutual exchanges? Community where we all try and win, not just somebody wins. So we're trying to take the best bits of crowdfunding, marry them with an exchange facility which allows for secondary trading, but also brings in institutional uh, flow. I think it's an incredibly exciting part of the industry, both in the peer-to-peer -peer lending side, but also in the crowdfunding, but not just crowdfunding, small amounts reasonably large amounts. One of our existing customers last, last week raised five million quid, uh, the biggest UK crowdfunding so far. Um, it will take time for this to roll out, but it's, uh, I think it's a fantastic opportunity and one I'm hugely excited about. Um, advice, patronizing advice from a nearly 50 man. Uh, remember how much luck 
plays in anybody's story. If you're fortunate to be visited by luck, remember those who are not as fortunate as yourself. Um, it's incredibly important. My view is take risk. You must take risk. Don't get too ahead of yourselves, whether it's in terms of financially overcommitting yourself or in terms of your ego, because coming back from those positions is really, really difficult. And if you're not happy doing what you're doing, change, do something else, take the risk, get out there. Um, and lastly, very boringly, uh, dandy. It's, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. That's one of the things that keeps me uh, running into work every day. Thanks for your time. Thank you.